Yeah, lighting in this room is never gonna work in my favor. Hi cuties! So as you can tell by the title of this video, it's time for a book haul! Yes, I have purchased more books. Please ignore the books behind me that I have yet to read. Shh, it's okay. I didn't pay for all these books this time. Just like half of them. Recently in my family we had our huge annual garage sale and we struck a gold mine of old books that my sisters and I all once owned but have been in boxes in the garage for years. So clearly we didn't need them anymore. So I swapped them out for other books at Second and Charles and the Bookworm, which the Bookworm by the way in Boulder is now surpassing Second and Charles as my favorite bookstore because way better trade-in value and they're a cuter store and their staff is nicer. <laughs> but before I get to the books that I have purchased and traded, I found some old books of mine that I had completely forgotten about, slash had wondered where the hell they went to. So if you've known me since I was a kid, which it's doubtful for many of you, in about sixth grade, I was obsessed with the musical Cats. Just recently saw it again with my sisters. Still amazing and I love Cats, okay? It's just a nonsensical musical. It's more of a dance exhibition and that's how you have to take it, but it's beautiful and I love it. And they still had the original Rum Tum Tugger costume. I was so nervous they were gonna change it to this. Anyway, segue from that is I found my copy of Old Possum's Book of Practical Cats, Sorry for the Shine by T.S. Eliot. This is what the musical is based off of. I loved this book. It's a little tiny book, but I had wondered what the heck happened to it, and now I found it's back again. Another little blast from my childhood past was my old, old copy of Grimm's Fairy Tales. It doesn't even have the dust jacket anymore. When was this one published? There's no copyright date, but it was passed down to me from my grandmother, and I'm very happy to have this copy again. And the last book that I found is in terrible condition, but I don't care because I'm going to keep it forever. It was a book that I read as a child and I read it over and over and over again. Kind of says a lot about me. And that is Nobody is Perfect by Bernard Weber. And it's a fun little book with all these illustrations. It's so short. And if you ever happen to get a copy of this book, this is a book that really shaped me as a child. Okay. On to the new books. They're all kind of scattered around me right now. And I don't know how I'm going to do this. I'm gonna go for my latest trade-ins that I got from the bookworm. This first one I'm conflicted about because I didn't know much about this author and I don't know how you guys feel about this author, but the author is Nora Roberts. I already own a copy of year one, but this is her second book of Blood and Bone in the series. It's not her second book. She has a lot of books, but there's a lot of controversy about this author. So I don't know, I still wanna read these books and I got it for free, so. Eh. But I've seen this series around and I haven't fully read it yet, but I figured, eh, there's the second book. Might as well. The next one I have is actually a graphic novel, which is out of my comfort zone, but it is Wires and Nerve by Marissa Meyer, who wrote The Lunar Chronicles, which I also haven't read yet. I'm not a big comic reader or graphic novel reader. They're the same thing, by the way. We're gonna give this one a shot. These next books I used to own, but had to sell them when I went to go live in Japan. And now I have copies back of Wildwood and Under Wildwood. This was like a middle grade novel by Colin Malloy. I'm actually really excited to get this one again. One of my coworkers is actually reading Wildwood and kind of sparked the reinterest in reading this book, so, and this series. There is one more book in this trilogy, but I didn't find it. And the last book I got recently at Bookworm, I have more from Bookworm, was Ghosts of the Tsunami by Richard Lloyd Perry. This involves the 311 tsunami and earthquake that struck Japan while I was living here, but I lived in a part of Japan that wasn't really affected by it. We saw the trauma and everything that was happening. We had the rolling blackouts. We only felt a little bit of the earthquake and didn't have anything to worry about with the tsunami. It's weird because I was there when it happened, but I wasn't there. It's a part of my life that I'll never forget. And I want to read a bit more about it just to fully comprehend. Because I know when I was there, there were things that were glazed over for the foreigners so that we wouldn't panic or anything. But it's a topic that's close to my heart and I'd like to read more about. Now we're getting into, I don't know, territory. Some of these are from Second and Charles. Some of these are from Book Outlet because I did have a little bit of a Book Outlet splurge. Recently they had double points, so I had to. This funny thing I got from Second and Charles, which is Tarot by Marissa Kennerson. And this involves a whole fantasy world, but with tarot cards as the setting. So like she goes, I think, to the realm of cups. The main character, Anna, has mentors who are like the hermit, the fool, and the magician. So I thought this was an interesting way to interpret tarot. Also from Second and Charles, I bought Slayer by Kirsten White. This is a Buffyverse book. I'm 
really interested in seeing this because I love Buffy. I'm excited to see how into this generation a Slayer is born. This next one is from Bookworm. I believe I got this one at Bookworm. And that one is Before She Ignites by Jodi Meadows. I actually haven't read anything by Jodi Meadows, but I have a slow growing collection of her books. So we'll see how much I like this one. And to round off my Maggie Steve Vader books, I have All the Crooked Saints. Sorry about the glare. It's just... I, I can't do anything about it right now. I want to do a readathon for all of Steve Vader's books because I haven't read a single one yet. But now I think I own all the ones she's published and we're waiting for Call Down the Hawk, which comes out later this year, I believe September or October. Now I can just have a whole Steve Vader marathon. I have a confession to make, guys. I am trash for Disney's Descendants. Don't know if you've seen it. I think it's cute and fun. And I have the first three books in the series. Haven't read them yet, but I discovered the fourth book, Escape from the Isle of the Lost, by Melissa de la Cruz. And I think this is going to have more to deal with the third Descendants movie, which is coming out soon, I think. And yes, I'm gonna be watching it. I don't care if it's for kids. I think it's freaking cute. So, yes. This book I actually got from the Boulder Bookstore, and it's a book I think that has a beautiful cover, and that is Descendant of the Crane by Joan He. I think that's how you pronounce the last name. Not sure, I'm pretty sure it's He. This one has some Chinese mythology that I'm super interested in reading about, and that's all I know about it. This next one was from bookoutlet.com, and I got it because it's based off a TV show that I love, which is Librarians. Don't know if you guys have watched Librarians or the Librarian movies, because they're awesome and I love them, but I did not know there was gonna be books for them. So this is The Librarians in the Lost Land by Greg Cox. Look at my Ezekiel, that's my boy. I love The Librarians, so I'm super excited about reading this book. Bookoutlet.com recently had a bunch of classic novels on their shelves, so I went on a little classic binge, and the first one I grabbed was Beauty and the Beast. Look how pretty this is. It's got some little, like, there's these little, like, pop-up things for you to discover. It's interactive! I love a book that's interactive! I've actually never read the original Beauty and the Beast, so I'm super excited to be reading this one. And on the same trend as Beauty and the Beast, I found The Secret Garden. Again, beautiful, interactive stuff. It's so cute! Now, Secret Garden is one I read as a kid, but definitely want to read it again with this copy. And I forgot how big this book is. I got Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. Not interactive, but still a beautiful cover. And they're remaking the movie again. Emma Watson is gonna play Meg, I believe. And that's all I remember from who got cast in it. And the final binge of classics that I got is Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen. So I've never had my own copy of Northanger. I have Pride and Prejudice. I'm slowly gathering a hardcover collection of Jane Austen works. There's a lot of those like leather bound soft cover versions and they're pretty, but I like hardcovers, especially for my class. Classic, so Northanger Abbey. This video is gonna get super long because I also have an unboxing to do. So let's let's just let's just start going. The next book I found is Outrun the Moon by Stacey Lee, and this involves the 1906 San Francisco earthquake in Chinatown. Empress of a Thousand Skies by Rhoda Beliza. Honestly, I don't remember much about this book except that it's sci-fi and deals with a vengeful princess. Then I have Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik, which I still don't have uprooted yet, but you don't have to read uprooted to know this one. They're separate stories, but still equally beautiful, and I really want to read it. The next one is a contemporary surrounding a Chinese family called Number One Chinese Restaurant. I realize now I've bought a lot of Chinese books. I didn't know I was on a Chinese binge, but okay. Then I have a hardcover copy of It Devours, a Welcome to Night Vale novel. Look, it's purple too. I don't know about you guys, but I love sprayed edges. This is the first novel I've ever owned from Welcome to Night Vale, and now I really want them all. And now I have a complete set of zombified Pride and Prejudice retellings with Dreadfully Ever After by Steve Hawkins Smith. I've got none of the Dreadfuls and Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. I don't care what people say about the movie, which I also love because it's ridiculous, but I've wanted to read these books for a while because who doesn't want to read about zombies in the region? Sierra. Next I have the third in a trilogy, Witch's Pyre by Josephine Angelini. I don't own the second book of this yet, but I figured, eh, why not get it? Next I have Talon by Julie Kagawa, and I loved her Iron Face series, so let's read about her dragons now. This one I almost considered not getting, but I'm planning to do a readathon for the heyday of YA paranormal romance back in the mid-2000s. So I found Unearthly by Cynthia Hand. I don't know much about this, except that I know that it was super popular during the era of Twilight. So I plan on reading this and Hush Hush, uh, probably Fallen. They're ones that I've never read, but they're ones that I think would be kind of fun to read now. Speaking of the heyday of YA romance novels, I loved the Selections a Trilogy by Kiera Cass, but I've never read The Siren by Kiera Cass. Why not? 
The selection was great, guys. I don't know what all you guys want to hate about it. Selection was great. And I picked up a new one that I hadn't heard much about, but that was The Thirteenth Child by Patricia C. Reed. And it looks kind of spoopy and stuff, so I gotta read it. That's just who I am. The next two books I've actually already read on audiobook, but I liked them so much that I wanted to get them in hardcover. And that was The Wrath and the Dawn, and The Rose and the Dagger by Renee Adier. I like Wrath and Dawn more than the second one. This is not a review video, Stephanie. They're so pretty covers, and they're ones that I think I may go back and read again. So I thought it was a good retelling of A Thousand and One Arabian Nights. And I found the final book in the trilogy of The Curse Workers by Holly Black, which is Black Heart. Still haven't read the first two yet. And in the realm of newer books, I found a copy of Blood Leaf by Crystal Smith. And I'm already hearing some spoilers about it, so I want to read this soon so that I stop getting spoiled. We have Stain by A.G. Howard. I also have a recent new collection of her books, but haven't read them yet. We've got Sea Witch by Sarah Henning. I have a thing about Disney retellings, if you can't tell. Strange Grace by Tessa Gratton. One that's been on my TBR for a long time is Reincarnation Blues by Michael Poor. And look at this cover, guys. It's kind of crazy and reminds me of the supernatural enhancements which I loved. Another finale of a trilogy series from the Effigies trilogy is Legacy of Light by Sarah Rothley. I really want to read this trilogy. It doesn't look like it from the covers, but it's actually about superheroes. And because I have the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy, I needed to get the novella, which is A Night of Cake and Puppets by Lainey Taylor. Now I can read that trilogy too. I say to myself as I have an enormous amount of books on my TBR that I own, I'll get to it. Another new release that I found was Dance of Thieves by Mary E. Pearson. Again, gorgeous cover. Oh my god. And the next one is one I found on Book Outlet recently, and it's one of those where you see the cover and you just have to have it. And then the tagline gets you to buy it, and that is space opera. In space, everyone can hear you sing. It's basically American Idol in space, and I'm ready for it. <laughs> and I found the sequel to Furthermore by Tahara Mafi, which is Witchwood. And I feel so bad I'm going to butcher this name, and that is Akata Witch by Nebi Okorafor. So sorry if I pronounced that name wrong. Probably did. <sighs> We're getting down to it, guys. We're getting there. The next one is a series that I've been intrigued about for a long time. Still not sure what it's exactly about. There's four books in the series, and I've been able to find books two and three, but it's taken a while for me to find book one, which is The Merciless. I assume something witchy is happening here. I feel like it's Mean Girls with witches. So basically the craft? We'll see. And we have book two of A Sea of Ink and Gold, which is The Speaker by Tracy Chi, the sequel to The Last Magician, which is The Devil's Thief by Lisa Maxwell, the sequel to Villains by V.E. Schwab, Vengeful, which I still don't own villains yet, but I really want to find it. And the third book in one of Ray Carson's trilogy, Into the Bright Unknown, which I still don't own the first two books, but ah, it was there. Okay, that is all the books that I've traded bought, gotten for free, found in my garage. Now we finally move on to my Owl Crate, which I've never, I don't think I've really done Owl Crate unboxings before, but I saved it because I wanted to do it. This is the June box and I think I can do it with my finger. Haha. -ha. I haven't looked at any other reviews for this, so I don't know what to expect. So let's delve in. The first thing we pull out is a lovely little pin called Child of the Library with a kitty and some books. So that'll go on my little pin flag I have made. We've got a Libraries of Wonder coaster set. I can't even open the box to show you what it is. Libraries were full of ideas, perhaps the most powerful and dangerous of weapons. Books spoke mind to mind, soul to soul, across the abyss of time and distance. Imagine peace where the dead rest on shelves like books and when in doubt go to the library. All right, next. It's a key, but it's a pen. Wait, is it a specific key? Is this a secret garden cake? Not any specific key, but it's a, it's a gel pen. Oh, I like this. Is this coffee? Yes, I don't drink coffee, but it's by Book Bow Brew and it's Bell's Library. So I'll be giving that to my sister. <laughs> oh, whoa, what is this? Oh my gosh. <gasps> so we have these beautiful bookends is what I got for you. There's two of them, but they're tied together. I can't get them apart, but bookends. I could use bookends. Is this a tote bag? We got a tote bag that says, Dream Up Something Wild and Improbable by Lainey Taylor. Ooh. I always need tote bags. No, I don't, but yeah. Oh no. Oh no, this is great. Okay. I thought I just bought this book. The book of the month is Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. So glad I didn't just buy this. I almost did. I probably don't need it as an audiobook now. We got a sticker in here that says magic can twist the purest of hearts. This is an exclusive <coughs> Owl Crate edition. Basically, it means it's more purple. I noticed that's a theme with Owl Crate editions. And it's a signed edition. Woo! -hoo. All right. Woo! Almost bought that book the other day. Next month of July is Tournaments and Trials. 
so that'll be fun. There you go. That was my Owl Crate of the Month. Finally got to open it. That was another massive book haul by yours truly. Tell me what books you guys most recently bought in the comments below. And if you're not already following me on my Goodreads or other social medias, follow the links in the description. And I will see you next time, cuties. Bye!